Welcome to MCO 455 for summer of 2023. For the summer we're going to be using Blackboard Ultra which is a little different to what we're used to in terms of dealing with Blackboard. For the MCO 455 AB theory section I'll be teaching the first half May June and Hatel Patel will be continuing on covering the second half for July August. In the MCO 455 CD and EF section I'll be doing the first half and Seda Shiva Shankar Remini will be doing the second half. Currently all the courses Courses for MCO 455, both theory and lab, are private, but well before May 8th when the classes start, it will be made available to you. Now there's two ways to look at this. This is the graphical mode that some of you prefer, but myself I prefer this mode here so that you can see all the information you need here and get at the courses a lot quicker. If you're in the AB theory section, you'll either be in the A or B lab section. If you're in the CD theory section, you'll either be in the C or the D lab section. And if you're in the EF theory section, you'll either be in the E or the F lab section. But no matter what theory section you're in, you're going to have the same instructor for both the lab and the theory. Right now we're looking at the MCO 455 AB theory section. However, all the theory sections are set up exactly the same way. One of the first things you should do is look under details and actions here and come down to the announcements. When you click here, it's going to come up with this, which is saying watch this intro video first, which is exactly what you're doing. The second part here is required materials to purchase for MCO 455, which we'll look at shortly. And then we can scroll down here to find about theory class essentials. Now for all theory classes that you attend, have one of the following laptop, tablet, phone for theory evaluations in class. And please remember if you choose to do theory evaluations online and not in the class, there will be no support to provide answers to questions or reset your attempt if the internet connection is lost. Now once we've checked out the announcements, the next thing we want to take a look at is something up here under course content, important dates and deadlines. What you're going to see here is that it tells you when the college is closed and there's going to be three times during the summer that the college will be closed and there will be no classes. Now that also is going to impact on other things such as the course addendum. So let's take a look at the course addendum. And this is probably one of the most important documents you're going to look at this semester. It tells you everything here that's going to be done and when it's going to be done. For instance, Lab 1 quiz is going to be the first evaluation you're going to have in the lab. And it's 2% of your mark. And you're also going to find here that May 22nd the college is closed. So I've taken some of that information on important dates and deadlines and put it in here because some of these things are going to have to be moved around if you happen to have a class theory or lab on Monday. July 3rd the college is closed again which is going to cause some issues with rescheduling and also the last one here August the 7th the college is closed as well. I've shown all the different evaluations that had to be moved where they were first and where they're going to be moved to and this is only going to affect the EF theory section and the EE lab section. One of the more important things for this course is you must pass both the lab and the theory in order to pass the course. As you notice here, 40% of your mark is going to be lab, 60% theory, but if you get a failing mark in the lab, fail the entire course. All evaluations, theory or lab, are done online in a multiple choice true-false format. There's nothing to be handed in for the entire semester. All labs are to be pre-done in an open lab before the lab class. And there will be an open lab schedule made available to you. In the lab class, you will be given the lab quiz and without pre-doing the lab in an open lab before the lab, you're not going to be successful. Now the labs that you're going to be given will have video instructions on YouTube that were linked into the lab that will show you step by step what it is you have to do. So it's going to be very easy in an open lab to be successful. All lab quizzes and lab tests must be done in the lab class. It's in person and if you don't show up there I do take attendance and I will be giving you a zero for any lab evaluations that you attempt to do online and not in the class. There's going to be a short window to start all the evaluations, both lab and theory. And anybody that misses the window will not be able to take the lab evaluation and get a mark of zero. Because the theory is taught in a flex mode, you can either do the theory evaluations in class or online. And there will be a 15 to 20 minute window in which to start the evaluation. If you miss the window, you will not be able to start the evaluation and your mark will be zero. However, if you choose to do the evaluation online and you have internet issues, I will not reset your attempt. And if something goes wrong, and are not in class, I will not allow you to restart 
start the evaluation or retake it at a later date. So it's important if you want to get any kind of support to ask questions and get attempts reset or have any issues dealt with, you have to be in the theory class within that 15 to 20 minutes. So only students that take the theory evaluation will be able to have their attempt reset if there's a problem. If you're going to do it in class, you have to have a laptop, tablet, or a device with a browser, such as a phone, and uh, bring those to the theory room on evaluation day. Now you're going to need a phone to authenticate your login to Blackboard and do any theory or lab evaluation as well. So either an Android phone or an iPhone will work perfectly for this course. Now there is a textbook for the course. It's called Embedded IoT Using Embed. And you can see here from the introductory chapter, getting started with IO, serial communications, and so forth, it's going to take you through all the necessary information you're going to need to be successful with this course. Under Professor Contact Information, you'll see my room here, and you can actually click to email me. And you can also click here to view my timetable. You can also go here and download my timetable for your own use. Under Video Lectures, you'll see Week 1 Video Lectures to go with Week 1, Week 2 Video Lectures to go with Week 2, and Week 6 Video Lectures to go with Week 6, but there's no teaching Week 7 and Week 8. So when it says here, week 7, 8, and 9 video lectures, those go with week 9, 10, and 11. To get us started on the material for week 1, we can go to video lectures, week 1 video lectures, and take a look at what we have here. Each one of these is a link to a YouTube video, and let's take a look at, for instance, Lab 1, Part 1. So if we click here, we can see this screen coming up. Now the first thing you want to do is go down here and make sure your quality is set to the maximum. The other thing is most of the videos that I have here have chapters. So if we click here, we can see the various chapters here, intro, course addendum, lab one overview, and so forth. So for instance, if we want to go to question 1C, we can click here and it's going to take us to that particular question and just go through the explanation for that bypassing all the other stuff so we can go to any section that we want in the video quickly just by clicking here and that's true of most of the videos but not all the videos that I've got under video lectures besides their video lectures that are labeled 1 through 6 for the first half 7 8 9 for the second part for those weeks we also have the same numbering system here for practice quizzes so if we take a look here we have practice quizzes for 1 through 6 for the first half and 7 8 9 for the first three weeks of the second half of the semester so if we want to take a look at say week two we have two particular ones here and I'm going to choose this one because there's only two questions here and so when it does come up it's going to say what the assessment is and it's going to say unlimited because all of our practice quizzes you have unlimited attempts. You can do them as many times as you want to practice the material until you're quite comfortable so that you do the actual assessments that are worth marks because these aren't worth marks. So we're going to say view assessment and it says after running this code the binary values in C, D, E, and F are and then it gives you some different choices here. I'm going to just pick this one at random and uh, it says you're not able to go back to the previous question once you do this. Now if you slide down here, make sure you hit the continue and we'll do that. And after you've answered any questions on the practice quizzes, if you're a little tired or you have something else to do, you can hit save and close and then you can get out of here and come back. And then the next time you view assessment here, it will allow you to then go on to the next question, which is question two. And I'm just going to pick one randomly here and I'm going to say submit. And when I say submit, it's going to come up and it's going to give me a confirmation thing. And I'm going to say close. And then right away, it's going to tell me, wow, I guessed right. I should buy a lottery ticket. I got 100%. And then you can start attempt two. Now, these marks will actually show up in your grade book. So let's just get out of this for a second. So in your grade book here, you're going to see that you got 100% for this particular evaluation here. So this gives you very quick feedback, immediate feedback as to what you know and what you don't know so that you can get very good at questions that you're going to see later on evaluations you will be marked on. So this is just for practice and there's various practice quizzes we saw for up to nine weeks. If we go back to content now, we have all these practice quizzes week by week which will provide you information that you're going to need for the chapter quizzes and there's all together five chapter quizzes 
and those are going to provide more feedback for you as to what's on the term test and then finally on the final exam. This is the best way to learn is by doing drill and practice on the practice quizzes and your chapter quizzes are worth 10% of your mark. The term tests are worth 30%, 15 and 15, and your final exam is worth 20 to give you a grand total of 60% for the theory portion of the course. Now that we've looked at all the theory aspects of the course, let's start looking at the lab aspects. Now this is the AA section, which is identical to the other lab sections. You're going to find over here, we've got under course content, important dates and deadlines, and all the same stuff down to here where it says textbooks that's in the theory class itself. Now under here we have seven labs. Under labs, we're going to have our open lab schedule, and these are the lab classes that have open time available to learn about the Freedom K64. They actually have that equipment in here and you're going to need that to do lab 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 in an open lab before you come in. So this is the open lab schedule for last semester. I'll be posting the one for this semester very shortly. You're going to be doing lab 1, lab 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 here and you're not getting marks for those. What's going to happen is, once you've learned how to do those properly, you're going to be doing lab quizzes for lab 1, lab 2, lab 3, lab 4, lab 5, lab 6, and lab 7, which are worth 10% of your mark. And then you're going to have two lab tests afterwards worth 15% each, a total of 40% for the lab portion, but based on testing only in the lab quizzes and the lab tests. Now the lab quizzes are based on the labs, the lab tests are based on the lab quizzes. So you should be able to do fairly well with a little bit of practice in those labs. Now let's turn our attention to announcements and let's take a look at the lab safety rules first. And you have to have safety glasses starting in week two. Starting in week three, you have to have safety glasses and a wrist strap or else you will not be allowed in the lab. And anybody wearing open-toed shoes, such as sandals and flip-flops, will also not be allowed in the lab. Also, if you look here, there's required materials to purchase for MCO 455. So if we go here, we can click here and we can see a list of all the things that you're supposed to purchase. Now this is a list from summer 2022, but uh, summer 2023, we're using the same parts. However, you'll find that these two, first two that are here, do not have to be ordered because those labs that you saw in yellow in the open lab schedule have the Freedom K64 with the Grove Shield already there. The only thing you have to purchase is the other stuff here. You have to purchase the LCD, the passive infrared motion detector, the four digit display, temperature sensor, angle sensor, four pin unbuckled cable, and the Blue Fruit UART friend. Now the way to do that is just click here. DigiKey is our preferred supplier. They usually deliver within two to three days tops and uh, if there's any problems they basically get another one without having to ship back the other as long as you talk to me first. So if you take a look here we've got 159 in stock and all you have to do is add to cart. Once you add this LCD to cart then you're going to go and look at the passive infrared here, add to cart and so on until your cart is full. And a couple things that I would suggest though is if you have a number of people that want to order all this stuff as one group you're going to get a discount because then the shipping cost will be practically waived because anything over $100 they give you free shipping. So when do we need these? Well, let's take a look and look at our addendum. We're going to start using those parts starting in the week of June 12th. We're going to be using our temperature sensor and our pot, which means that no later than week five, which is the week of June 5th, you better have ordered and have them in your hands before you start coming in on the week of June 12th. And that pretty much concludes everything you need to know about MCO 455.